All right, welcome to the Eric J. The Great Podcast. We got a special guest on the show today, hip-hop artist Jamar Anthony. How you doing? What's happening with it? Yeah, man, we're going to start off by playing one of his songs. If if any of y'all haven't heard his music, we're going to start off by playing one of his songs, and then uh, we'll get into the interview. Just give me J. Cole vibes, Dom Kennedy vibes, man. Oh, yeah. I appreciate it, man. Yeah. And my generation is full of names that being blood twisting, pill popping, simple minded, bandwagon hopping, dumb niggas. I smoke too, I ain't trying to surround the judge niggas. Just be productive. You waste the time just because let me get sway. You think positive rap is boring. You rather hear about niggas pimping and whipping forest. You rather hear about niggas killing and flipping chickens. I guess the negative is more appealing if I'm being real. But can't help but ask myself what's up with today. Bunch of young, dumb, stupid niggas stuck in their ways. I get the feeling like I'm falling out of the loop. It's hard to make fun of music when you got something to say. I mean, like, did I really put my heart on display? Let you peek at my soul, through the reach of my goals. But these days, my luck is at an all-time low. Is this even what I want anymore? I don't know, because I've always been a misfit. LB, I cash on the outlast statistics. I was a gift to Benjamin. They worry about no mistress. These women is a headache. They gon' only get kids stressed. I swear, many souls are too often the same. They never want goals and pocket tickets off of their game. These goofy chickens can never reserve a spot on my mind. Getting out of this hell hole. The only thought on my brain, cause nigga ain't no love in the heart of the city. Uh, crabs in the barrel, niggas fighting over pennies. Ain't nobody thinking clearly, cause they hypnotized with envy. The shit gets straining. I'm running on empty. Uh, I'm locked and loaded, motherfucker, don't tempt me. Just tell your favorite rapper, run along quickly, cause they just in the way if they ain't with nor against me. They claim to want it more, but really, you ain't convinced, cause ever since elementary music's been all I got. Been kicking with the cases, didn't fit in with the jocks. Even nerds probably would have told a nigga, kick rocks, hip hop, underdog. Waiting on my big shot, cause I always. Hey, stop it right there! Hey, that was, I was about to let the whole song play out. Man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, love, man, I appreciate you, man. Yeah, man. So, uh, first off, man, just uh, tell the people, man, uh, where you from, uh, and uh, how old are you? What's going on, man? I'm from Las Vegas, Nevada, born and raised. I'm 31, just turned 31 May 1st. Okay, so, that's what's up. Yeah, you're not yeah, too old yeah. me, man. I'm 28. Oh, yeah, yeah. You right there. You right there for sure. So, Las Vegas, man. So, uh, what's the first thing that uh, that comes to mind when you hear your hometown? Lights. City lights. You know what I'm saying? That's the first thing. Because that's what you, you know, that's the first thing people come into the city. You know what I'm saying? The bright lights. Well, if you come in at nighttime, you come in in daytime, you're just going to see it. Just going to see, like, it's going to look like it should be light. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's going to be pretty much the same, though, you know? <laughs> so, man, for anybody, um, that never been to Vegas and don't know about, you know, struggles that you might have to go through growing up as a, you know, everyday kid in Vegas and things like that. Just describe some of the struggles you had to go through as a child, teenager growing up. And, and if you had a two parent household, things like that. Um, Just coming up in Vegas, I would say, uh, I would say the struggles would be pretty much, you know, like any other any other place. You know, you got to deal with a little badass kid, bullying, you know. Um, pretty much like, it's fast. You, you kind of got to um, gotta be able to catch on real fast at, at the pace of the city, though. You know what I'm saying? It's a fast pace kind of city so um yeah and I grew up like I would say in a single parent home my dad was there until I was well my dad was in and out of my life 
I say the longest he ever like really stayed consistency is probably consistently was probably like two years, three years, but he was pretty much in and out. But when I turned eleven, all right, you can keep on for sure. Um, but I was saying, uh, just coming up, uh, I would say more. It was more more of a single parent home. My dad was pretty much in and out. Uh, but when I was 11, my dad and mom, they got a divorce. So it was really just, you know, moms. Moms was holding it down. You feel me? So for the most part, I would say like a single parent home. Just coming up in Vegas, moms worked at Circus Circus. That's like a casino, a very popular. Well, I wouldn't say popular, but like a known casino in Vegas. Um. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much you know how I came up. I come from a place called uh, the West Side of Vegas, and uh, you know that's where pretty much like uh, like, but it's kind of known as like the hood in Vegas, like the West Side. That kind of like that's, yeah, that's the hood. That's where all the you know, crackheads and, you know, the, you know, the gangsters, all that. You find a little bit of everything over there. Drug dealers, you know. So, uh, yeah, my dad, he was into, uh, my dad was kind of like into the drug game, into the streets, kind of one foot in, one foot out. You feel me? But, uh, yeah, for the most part, that's what it was, man. Grew up on the west side, G Street. Me, myself, I never got involved in no gangs. At a young age, getting older, I kind of uh, started affiliating myself with certain people. But um, coming up, moms, she wasn't having none of that. Like, as far as, like, you know, staying outside and none of that. Moms was real overprotective. She had us in church. So the church was in the hood, too. You feel me? So we used to walk to church, damn near get jumped. You know what I'm saying? But uh, that's just what it is in Vegas, man. A lot of people get it twisted. Like, Vegas is, you know, all about casinos and lights. But it's, it's ghettos here and, and pretty much everything that you would find in any other inner city. You feel me? Okay, then. That's what's up. So, uh, describe. Um, do you have any siblings? And, uh, and name some of the activities that you was into um, as a kid. Well, actually, one of them is adopted, and I got one. I got one older brother, and I got one younger, um, younger brother. He's five, and um, my older brother, I believe, he's uh, he's like 34, 35. My sister, she's thirty three. My younger sister, I think she just turned twenty seven. So, um, you know, just coming up. Pretty much, you know, we really all doing music. Like my dad, he got us a keyboard, you know, when I, I say about seven, six. He got us a keyboard. We used to just be so bored, you know, we just make songs. You know what I'm saying? We'd make songs on the keyboard at like six, you know. I could still remember the songs too. So ever since then, that's what kind of got me hooked on music and just doing my thing with that. But, you know, I played Pop Warner and did a couple of sports and all that too, like basketball and football, but that never was really my thing like that. I, I was always just, from as far back as I can remember, I was into doing music. Like I always just wanted to do music. Like far back as I could remember, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely, bro. Uh... Did you have anybody in your family or somebody that was close to you that was involved in the music business? My granddad, my dad's dad, he actually, uh, he was a sax player. He played the sax, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and that was his passion, you feel me? But uh, rest in peace, you know, he ended up kind of just, you know, um, getting caught up in the city. The city would get you. You know what I'm saying? And he ended up not being able to uh, follow through as far as like with his with his vision and his passion. But um, 
yeah, I would, I would definitely have to say, you know, maybe my music, my love for music, maybe strings from that. You feel me? Yeah, okay, yeah, that's completely understandable, bro. Uh, what, uh, what were some of your fav favorite music artists that you enjoy listening to growing up? Oh man, you just talking about just music, period, or yeah, just you know, music uh, in general. Hip -hop. Just music. Let in me general. name them all because I every time I go. Like every time I'm asked this question, I get off the phone. I'll be like, "Damn, I forgot somebody." So let me try to name them fast. Um, coming up, I really liked. Well, really made like, like music, not rap, but just music was uh, hearing Darnell Jones. My dad used to play a lot of Darnell Jones in the car. He had a Cadillac. I think it was like a goddamn. It was like a '01. Could have been like a 2000. It was a 2000 Cadillac or '01. But I know that system. His sound system was so fire. You feel me? When I first heard uh, Darnell Jones' album, What Wanna Be, that's what really made me want to do music. He used to listen to Darnell Jones and Jagged Edge and just a lot of R&B type of acts. You feel me? Um, so that's what really like started me wanting to do music. And I was noticing things in the music that, you know, I really liked. Like with Darnell Jones, like I was noticing his dubs and like, the reverb and just certain things that other people wouldn't really probably pay attention to. Like I was noticing that like ad libs, like how was he singing in the background and still singing on the main one too? Like I thought that was tight as hell. You feel me? So, um, yeah, it was just, it was just things like that, that, uh, kept me for me like that, that really made me want to get into music, you know? Okay. So, um, uh... First off, um, where did you get your is your is your rap name? Is that uh your government name or or in uh two uh when was your first time going to a recording studio? Oh man, I'm loving these questions. Man. For real. Nobody ever asked me that. Um my first time coming well, my rap name springs from my middle name, Jamar. You feel me? So my middle name is J-A-M-A-A-R and I always kind of liked how my mom made um, made my name unique. You feel me? With the two A's. That would be like, just take on like the Jamar. You feel me? Coming up, my first rap name, and I never even told nobody this because it's kind of embarrassing, but my first rap name was Tweety Bird. <laughs> tweet, I don't know why the fuck I don't know like I had it we had a group I had a group with like some some of my dudes that I grew up with and we we went by the Looney Tunes you feel me and my 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 dude he he went by Daffy Duck the other home he went by Bugs and I went by Tweety because coming up you know I had a real like high-pitched voice too like you know what I'm saying? And people used to make fun of me a lot for that, like having like no bass in my voice. Like every time I answer the phone, is this, your, is this your sister? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like people, I, I went through a lot with people, you know what I'm saying? Um, pretty much making fun of my voice. So I kind of, I think that's why I might've went with Sweetie Bird. But then, um, you know, that all changed. It grew and then it went to Jay Fresh. You know, I used Jay from the Jamar and I'm just like, okay, Jay Fresh. And then it went to Jay For Real. Like as I got older, and then you know, um, when I left like a group situation, another group situation, that's when I just dove into okay, I'm, I want to be just you know as real as I possibly can, as true to myself as I can. So that's when I went with uh, Jamar, because it's my middle name, it's true to me. I ain't want no gimmicks. I just want to just straight up. It's who I am, Jamar. You feel me? So mm -hmm. hell yeah. And well, when was your first time going to the studio? Man, my first time going to a studio, shit, a real studio, because we used to make, like, on everything, like, we used to, uh, with the group, we used to record songs on, like, a cassette player. Like, that's how, like, how I got, like, familiar with recording. We had, like, a cassette player that you could push record on, and we would put the piano up to the cassette player, and we would, like, sing the song while it's recording. And then that's how we used to make songs. Like, 
you know, as a child, I'd make some make tapes and pass them out. But my first time going to a studio, I think um, far back I can remember, I think I was in the eighth grade. I think I was in the eighth grade. My sister was in a group. She had a group that she was in, and um, they ended up being able to go. And that really wasn't even a real studio. That was in somebody's house. I was in, you know what I'm saying? Um, do you mean that? Do you mean like a real, real studio or like somebody that got a setup type? Oh, just studio in general, you know, whatever could get the job done, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, if I if I'm like if it, if that's the case, I would definitely say like seven because we was we was cutting records. I'm telling you, I still got tapes. We was cutting records at like eight, seven. You feel me? But my first time going to the studio that actually had a mic and everything, I was in the eighth grade. Okay. So are you more of a freestyler or a writer or a mixture of both? Man, I could I could I could freestyle if I really want to, but I like writing because it's like I be really wanting to say something. You know what I'm saying? I don't wanna just I don't be wanting to just wing it like that. You know what I'm saying? I don't wanna just be on there rambling some random shit. Like I really wanna say something. So I I hold myself to a high standard, you know, with my with lyrics. You feel me? Just based off of the people I came up with. Like, you know, I, I named all the, the R&B artists. And also, I like Michael Jackson, too, coming up. Like, I used to get in front of the TV and trying to dance like Michael Jackson. And you know what I'm saying? That's what I started. And if I'm being honest, I'm going to be 100, too, on this. It's going to be the first podcast that I really tell, like, all this, man. But um, growing up, we came up, we grew up in the hood, right? But I told you, my mom, she didn't want us... She didn't want us to be products of our environment. So she always tried to, you know, want better for us. So she put us in private school from um, up until I was in the fifth grade. You feel me? So, um, you know, just being around all the white kids, they had us listening to, you know, NSYNC, Backstreet Boys. You feel me? Um, like corny ass little groups like that. And that gave me like, that made me want to do music too. So if you listen to like, if you listen to my music, like to like you know my whole catalog, you'll see how diverse I am and just the type of music. Like I never wanted to be put in a box. Like I make all types of music, you know, because I went from Backstreet Boys, and then you know my older brother, he's the one that actually put me onto Tupac, and that's when I started wanting to rap. He told me this Tupac line: uh, "Revenge is like the sweetest joy next to getting pussy," and. Uh, <laughs> That was my, the, after that, I'm like, what he say? I'm like, he, that, I couldn't believe he put that together like that. I'm like, that shit's tight. I want to make some shit like that. <laughs> so after that, I started writing down Tupac's lyrics. I started writing down Nas. Nas is my favorite rapper. Tupac was, but getting older Nas is now. But I used to write down Nas lyrics, Tupac lyrics, Eminem lyrics, Ludacris lyrics, um, I was a big fan of DMX, Jay-Z, 50 Cent. When 50 Cent came out, I thought, man, you know, um, Ja Rule. I thought Ja Rule was tight. You know, just um, Nelly, you feel me? All those rappers that came in, up in my era, I looked up to, and I would write down their lyrics. And I think that helped develop, too. That helped develop my sound and my style, too. Okay. So as far as your writing, do you, uh, do you write – every day or is it just like something that just come to you randomly as you go through stuff? Man, I would say I try to write when I'm feeling inspired pretty much. Like if I'm feeling inspired, but even even then I still try to stay sharp, you know, but um, I'll be lying if I said every day. Definitely not every day. I would say probably at least twice a week. Oh, okay. You feel me? Twice a week. Hell yeah. So, you know, just like anything in life, you got to get that confidence, you know, when you're doing either a sport or something like rapping and things like that. So when when you started going to the studio, you know, at the early age and transitioning to a teenager until you became an adult, when did you when would you say you got the confidence to really say I could really pursue this as a career? Because, you, you know, sometimes when you first starting out stuff, you could be like, yeah, I'm good at it, but 
I don't know, you know what I'm saying, if I could really pursue it, but you got that one moment, you know what I'm saying, that give you the confidence to be like, all right, I can do this, you know? Well, that's a good question, man. Um, I say probably like, uh, I don't know, real young, man, real young, because I was always into like just entertainment, like even coming up, like in the church, we had a group. Like the same group that I told you was the Looney Tunes. We had another group that was called the Adventist Boys to Men when we was at church. And we would perform at church. We perform little songs and all that. So that gave me the confidence to just be in front of people and perform. You know, I was always in a group. So, you know, that kind of definitely gave me the when you When you start off in a group, you ain't just out there by yourself. So that's what really would give you the confidence. But I'll say like, Ever since then, just being in a group, you know, um, that really gave me the confidence to uh, step out on my own. You know what I'm saying? So I say, you said like what age? Yeah, I was just saying like what time frame? I say probably like to really like be serious and like this is what I do. I do music. Shit, about 12, 13. Okay. 12, 13, hell yeah. So you're you're independent right now, right? Yes, yeah, sir. I actually got my own label. I started my own label. It's an independent label, Say Less. Um, and uh, yeah, Say Less pretty much. My last name is Sales, and it's spelled S-A-Y-L-E-S. And coming up, people always, you know, they would always be like, what's going on, um, you know, Anthony Salas? It's a sailors just coming up. People always said that sailors, you know. So one of my partners by the name of Brandarius Johnson, I was working with him on a on a project. Um, he's like a motivational speaker. And uh he actually brought the idea to me. He's like, man, that'd be cool if you started something that was just like say less entertainment. We do more, you know, we say less. And I just I heard him say that and I'm like, I just ran with it because you know, me, I always been the type of person. It's like, man, I, I can't stand people who talk about stuff and don't never do it. You feel me? They just be talking, you know, let's either we're going to get to it or not. Like say less, you feel me? That's always, I've always been like that. Like that's always been my biggest pet peeve too, is somebody talking a whole bunch of stuff and not following through with nothing. Like, I, you know, so I feel like that just really, I, I feel like that really um embodies the movement that I'm doing, say less entertainment, you know? You know, yeah. So as far as like, you know, a little later on down the line, would you would you sign to a label or do a label deal with a label if it made sense? Hell yeah, if they wanted to partner with Say Less, they wanted to partner, hell yeah. But that's definitely like what I want. Like it would have to be like as a as a partnership but say less for sure. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, yeah. So uh, how often do you record now? And um, you just give me an estimate number, you know, how much how much music you sitting on right now? Man, sitting on right now, I got about, shit, I try to record at least because it's, it's, it's tough, man. I, I like my music. I like a certain type of quality. The studio I go to ain't the most cheapest studio. So it's kind of <laughs> like I got to save to be able to do that. You feel me? Yeah. Shit, I would. If I could, I will be up in that bitch every day. You know, that would be my full-time thing. But right now, it's about, so like I said, about once every two months. But when I go in there, I save up enough to get like 11 hours, 12 hours. So I just record everything that I pretty much got already. Right now I'm sitting on probably like six songs. I just released a project, like the Say Less project. I just released that, the All-Stars. That's with the whole team. You know what I'm saying? I got a team of people who I feel are very talented. You feel me? We just released that project. So um, that was volume one. So I'm gonna be doing volume two and then I'm gonna still be releasing singles. You feel me? So, okay. Yeah, yeah. So take me back, man. Uh, take me back to the time, man, when you dropped that first project, man. The first project that you ever dropped, man. Uh, 
how did the city embrace you, man, once people knew that you was taking the music series and you dropped that first project, man? How was people embracing you around that time? Man, um, well, I'll take you to my first project. My first project was I Am Jamar. And, um, uh, you know, that project is really special to me because, you know, the person I told you that I grew up with, um, and the Looney Tunes, he was actually, it was three of us. Well, actually it was four at the beginning because my older brother used to be in, in the group too, but he ended up uh, moving because we don't got the same mom, got the same dad. So when my dad split with my mom, he ended up moving. Um, but uh, so it was us three. It was me, my, my boy Darnell and his older brother. So, uh, you know, long story short, me and Darnell, we've been best friends since... Uh, seven years old I was seven years old and um he's the one that actually drew the cover to my first project I am Jamar if you go to I am Jamar it's a drawn picture of me and uh he he actually was killed he was killed uh last year you feel me um oh sorry so, yeah no nah, it's all good man but uh that's why that project is so special to me because he drew, he drew that artwork for that, you know, and um, yeah. And I yeah. And, and also, man, not to cut you off, but also, man, I don't know if you ever thought of it like this, but I don't heard like similar situations to what you're describing right now. So I don't know if you ever thought about it like this, but, you know, him drawing that cover art, for your first project because you know you you was taking it serious when you was 12 or 13 but yeah you know, dropping that first project is really putting a stamp on taking it serious and him doing the cover art and you know that's an important thing for projects and things like that you know yeah. you probably didn't look at it like that at the time but now him being passed away that was him giving you that push to like, hey, just go ahead, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, thank you for that, man. Um, I believe, I believe that. I believe that. That it's definitely it's a meaning to that. Like it's a meaning to why he drew it. You know, if you listen to that project, he actually raps because he used to rap too. He's on the song Cooking Up, and it's like a skit after that, you know, and it's just a funny skit, you know, but uh it's definitely meaning to why he did that, like why he you know, was the one to draw that up, you know, and then the way that he's seen me too, because in the, on the picture, it's like, I'm a young boy. I think I'm actually 11 in the picture. I'm 11 years old with an Afro and he drew me with a crown around my head. You feel me? So that was the way that he seen me. You feel me? So, uh, yeah, that's a special project to me. I, I dropped that. I dropped that in 2013. Could have been 2012, 2013, but, um, yeah. Hell yeah, yeah, man. That's a special. That's special to me right there, man. For real. Yeah, if I was in your shoes, that'd be special to me too, man. You know, you man. Know, my mom was like that too often. Yeah, for real, for real. So, uh, have you done any shows yet? Definitely, man. You know, um. man i really would like to um do more shows outside of the city you feel me the show is in california you know um i'm not sure if you're too familiar did you see that show um rhythm and flow rhythm that sounds familiar yeah, it had Cardi B, Chance the Yeah, 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 I seen that. Yeah, that was like, I was on there. You feel me? If you go back and watch, like, I'm in, like, a couple of the scenes on there. So that was, like, the biggest show that I ever did. I, I looked at that as a show because it was, like, a performance and people around, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that probably was, like, the biggest show that I did. Um Hello? Yeah. 
Yeah, man, my bad. I'm about to push this door real quick, get some fresh air, you feel me? But uh, I'm with you, you know. Um, But, yeah, you said, what was the last show that I did? Oh, just, uh, I was just asking in general, have you did any shows? Oh, yeah, man, a lot, a lot, a lot, man. I definitely want to do more. I would love to just go on tour, you feel me? That's definitely, like, you know, my next plan is to be able to set up a tour. Oh, that's what's up. So uh, uh, how would you describe the music scene in Vegas, man? Like, you know, you you hear about all the popular music scenes as far as Atlanta, Detroit, Louisiana, New York, things like that. But, you know, how's the music scene out there in Las Vegas and do a lot of artists uh, collab out there? No. Nah. Hell no. Nah. I, I say it's more it's more clicked up, you know, everybody everybody doing their own thing, you feel me? Um, it is a little bit of a scene, but you know, Vegas, you know, we just I don't know, it, it's not that Atlanta type of vibe. It ain't that, you know, it ain't that more people are more I would say more standoffish. Like everybody's everybody really wants to be the first person to put the city on. So nobody really, you know, comes together to work together like that. It's it's no unity in the city for sure at all. You feel me? Oh, okay. Yeah. Have you worked have you worked for, with somebody in the in the same city as you besides your friends? Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. I work with uh Shit, I work with a couple of people in the city, for sure. Yeah, even on my on you know on my label right now, but what I'm doing, I wouldn't say that it's official because I'm signing paperwork with them. But uh, my dude DT seven hundred two, he's actually born and raised in my base Nevada. You feel me? Um, we work, you know, we working. So that's definitely a person I'm working with in the city. Hell yeah. Okay. So uh, what would you say is your most successful project so far? Turn of the 90s, for sure. <laughs> Turn of the 90s, man. I dropped that. That shit was out of here. You feel me? <laughs> uh, and, and I know why. You know, just because people can, uh, they hear those beats and, um, you know, the nostalgia that they feel from those beats, they're more susceptible to hear what you got to say when you're spitting over a beat that people recognize. You feel me? So, uh, hell yeah, we're turning the 90s, man. Hell yeah. Okay, then, so for any of your uh, people that follow you and your fans, man, you know, everybody know that you're a music junkie, but what 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 are things that you like doing? outside of music in your spare time that people probably won't think you'll like doing, you know? Man, I really like boxing. I really like boxing. I, um, hold on one second. Thank you, baby. Yeah, man, I really like boxing. Um, I got into boxing after, you know, a divorce because I was married, you know, um, you know, I just was going through a hard time, man. And I ended up taking up boxing just to, just so I wouldn't um, do something else, just so I wouldn't go crazy, you know, because divorce is tough, you feel me? Um, and then the passing of my homie, that all happened in the same year. Actually, it was like weeks apart, you know, so I was going through a lot mentally, you feel me? Um, so, yeah, that, that, that really brought me through, like just, getting into boxing and now it's just like it's something that I love doing you know uh, yeah yeah I like boxing too man I boxed for five years and I watch all the professional boxers. I boxed when I was in the I boxed for the military so oh that's cool man that's cool I just started I'm like I'm two about two years in so you know yeah. Well, that wouldn't be just starting, but it's like I'm just now really starting to, you know, um, I feel just develop uh, more skills. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. 
My bad, bro. I'm I'm all up in the store on the on the shelf. I just had to grab I had to grab some juice. I'm like, man, I'm thirsty as hell. I had no juice in the crib. You feel me? But I'm a real dude, man. I'm a real cat, and I want everybody to see that. Like everybody who's even watching this, like if you you know decide to check out my music and you know fuck with my movement, I want you to understand that you know I'm a dude. Ain't nothing. Ain't nothing. I'm not perfect. You feel me? But ain't nothing fake. I, I want everybody to see. You know, um, just firsthand, just, you know, I'm real about everything, you know, that I talk about. So, hell yeah. So, man, what are, what are your short and long-term goals, man, as far as your music career? Yeah, my short-term goal, I would say, is to um, is to really uh, to, to, to go on tour, to get this tour off the ground. You feel me? Long term is definitely to, um, you know, take this to the top, take, take, say less and what I'm doing all the way to the top of the billboards. You feel me? Like, that's it. Like, I want number one. I want the number one spot. You feel me? I'm not one of them dudes that just act like, man, I don't, I don't know. No, nah, like I'm coming. I, I want to be number one. Like, I want to have a number one single on the radio. You know what I'm saying? So. Uh, yeah. That's what's up, man. So, uh, um, for the rest of 2022, man, and the uh, um, beginning of 2023, man, uh, let the people know what you got coming up as far as projects and features, things like that. Guys, how you doing? I'm sorry. Shit, projects coming up. You you said 2022. And yeah, the 2022. Beginning. Yeah, in 2023, you know, beginning. Well, I I got a cup. I got a couple of people from my label that I'm trying to put out there. You know, if they would let me, having a label ain't the easiest thing because you literally have to fight with artists. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but I definitely got some talented people, you know, on the team that I would like to drop their project before I focus on dropping another project of my own. You know what I'm saying? Thank you. All right, have a great day. So yeah, I'm, that's that's like really a big focus for me right now is just getting these projects out. And then 2023, you feel me, Lord's willing, I'm gonna be coming with because I got volume one, I got the return volume one. That's the return of the 90s, you feel me? And then I got the return volume two. That's just like another project, but that's all original beats. You feel me? Um. 2023, I would like to hit y'all with volume three. You know, we're gonna turn it up. I got I got a lot planned with that. You know what I'm saying? And that's an exclusive. So uh yeah, for the rest of this year, I would like to get my artists out, get them a little bit more established, get their projects dropped, get a couple of projects dropped. Actually, one of the artists that I'm working with, her name is Soleil. She's a rapper. She actually just dropped her project. Okay. And it's uh, it's dope. It's real dope. It's called the Untold Story. It's called the Untold Story by Soleil. If you like hip hop, you are gonna fuck with that. You know, um, I would say she's like the female version of me. Like people think it's me with my voice pitched up. Like people always think like, I thought that was Jamar that just was playing with his voice. You know what I'm saying? So she's kind of like my protege. You feel me? Um. Yeah, yeah. It, whoever's watching this, go check that out by Soleil, S-O-U-L-E, The Untold Story. And then we got my man Dino Miles. He's a beast. He's crazy with the flow. His ass is crazy. My nigga Dino Miles, I'm trying to drop a project with him. Then we got DT702, he hard, you know. Um, and then we got DT702. Oh, I just said that. I'm sure. We got Sos Frank, my nigga Sos Frank. That's my little nigga. He like my little protege too. He like a little brother to me. I be, you know, just schooling him in the game. You feel me? Um, but if I could get them, you know, if I could get them dropped by the end of the year, next year, I think it'd be dope. And I think my fan base would appreciate their music just as much as they appreciate mine because I'm executively producing their projects. You feel me? So, hell yeah. Oh, that's what's up, man. It's good that you uh um the 
that you're finding that balance, you know, because a lot of a lot of people that's bigger artists, you know, that has labels, they struggle with finding that balance between, you know, their career and their artist career. It's good that you, you know, uh putting your artists uh as a priority early before, you know, um you get as big as those other artists, you know. Yeah. Well, you know, with me, it's like uh what made me even want to do this is because, you know, I see a lot of artists, you feel me? And just coming up as a kid, you know, nobody helped me get to the to where I'm at right now. Like, not that I'm some fucking superstar I'm struggling. I'm living solely off of streams right now, but you know, I'm not where I want to be at all. But um coming up, nobody would help. Like the older people that did music, they was all so focused on their own craft that they wouldn't help the younger people who had potential up because they ain't want them to come before them. But me, it's like, no, nah, that's kind of how I get to express myself too. You know what I'm saying? Even though, um, it's a singer I work with called Ray Antone. I actually have her project dropping too pretty soon. Um, but it's like I get to express myself through them. You feel me? Like, I can't sing like her. You feel me? So, and then like, you know, he, how you know this is in my head and she feel me so um yeah that's just my just like, um now and, and being involved in their career gives me love because I had a point to where it was like man I was at a crossroads and I really didn't even have no more inspiration like I really you know, it's kind of like I just forgot how to rap down there. You feel me? Like, I just, I had to find that inspiration again. And working with these new artists definitely gave me a um, more of a direction and, and lit a new fire, you know, with my writing and everything. I'm telling you, like, before I met these artists, before I started, you know, the label, it's just like, I couldn't, like, it was, it, it was bad. Like, I just, I had a life I love to see them drop projects I love to be involved and executively produce it like you know what I'm saying that's what I love about the game like I love the game like I know I'm talking a lot I gotta I gotta get this out though but I love the game like I love Hip hop in the early thousands and the late nineties, and how Dame Dash should be in the video with with you know the shirt off and the bottles and and Diddy and Mace in the videos with the shiny suits and you know all these things like I I watched coming up as a kid like I, that's what I do it for and I want to create that that feeling in the game that you know that people for um, their favorite artists. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much my mission, man, is just to bring that back. And, you know, by working with other artists, I feel like that's that's helping that process for sure. Absolutely, man. I'm going to do uh, two more questions and we get you out of here, man. Uh, one question, one of my I just started. Uh, I just came up with this question here recently. I like to ask everybody this question. Um uh, how do you want people to perceive you or know you for? I want people to perceive me and know me for. Yes. That's a really good question. I want people to know me for being, for being, for being true to who I am. You know what I'm saying? That for that's pretty much it. I want people to know me for being authentic. You know what I'm saying? Just being real. Like, just like how I told you when I was in the store. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's my life right now. You feel me? Like, that's what I want to be known for. Just being real and being passionate about what I do. I want people to for, for being about my word. Like, when I tell you I'm going to do something, you know, when I'm gone, I want people to be like, man, if he ever told you he's going to do something, no, he came through. For sure. Absolutely, bro. So uh, as far as closing remarks, man, do you got anything else that you want to let the people know about what you got going on 
and uh, let people uh, know how they can find you on social media and things like that? Man, um, like I said, just just you know, keep an eye out for say less. Um, that's pretty much like what I'm pushing right now. Just this whole say less movement. You feel me? You can follow me at Jamar Anthony, J-A-M-A-A-R-A-N-T-H-O-N-Y. Um, yeah, but that's pretty much it. You know, just say less, you know, all the artists I got dropping. And, you know, it's a diverse, I got a diverse list of artists. If you like trap music, I got Sos Frank. You like some gangster hood type music, I got Sos Frank. You like some hip hop flow, I got Dino Miles and Soleil. You know what I'm saying? You like a little bit of everything mixed in together? I got me. You feel me? You like R&B? I got a little bit of Ray Antoinette. You know? So, um, oh, yeah. Also, uh, Diani. Diani. Diani Lano. He's a male singer, a young cat. He's like 16. Uh, and he's pretty tight, too. You know what I'm saying? So um, I'm going to be working on a project with him as well. So yeah, that's pretty much just be looking for me to be executively produced in these projects and, and just throwing it out to the people so you guys could have some good music to ride around to. You feel me? Oh yeah, absolutely, man. Uh I uh, appreciate you uh coming on the podcast today, man. And uh anytime you want to come on, man, you can uh hit me up anytime. And um I don't just do interviews either, man. I talk about a lot of real stuff as far as like, you know, uh relationships, police brutality, child support, you know, uh, anything that's going on currently, you know, as far as, you know, if it's election or anything, you know what I'm saying? I uh, think in our community, it's a, a void of mental health and dialogue amongst each other as far as discussion issues and getting reinsurance with each other as far as like saying that other people go through similar things, but we just don't talk about it because how we've been treated historically as a, a culture, as far as, you know, slavery, segregation, we just talk to just take stuff on the chin and keep it moving, but don't address the issue mentally, you know what I'm saying? And trying yeah. to get over it. So that was one of the main reasons I started a podcast so people from similar backgrounds as me or different backgrounds could just get on and just talk about stuff and, and get more confidence in themselves after the conversation over. Cause I don't have plenty of people tell me after be like, man, I really needed to do that. You know what I'm saying? Cause I ain't know this, these many people was going through the same thing I was going through. Exactly. Exactly. And you know, uh, man, I commend you, man. I, I appreciate you for having me. I think the questions are dope. You ask questions that, that haven't been asked before. You feel me? Um, so anytime, man, you know what I'm saying? Anytime, we definitely locked in, for sure. Well, yeah, absolutely, man. I'm trying to uh, be the next Say Cheese, man. I've been doing this for about two years now. So I'm yeah. to, I don't got consistent within the last six months because I was only dropping like one episode a month. Now I drop every week. I had to start doing what the bigger podcasts do and start modeling some of the stuff that they do. Got it. Shit. You got it. Man, let me ask you, who's some of your favorite artists? Uh, let me see. I like a lot of artists, but it depends on what I'm in the mood for. Like, you know, like I appreciate lyricists too. Like, you know, I like, I was listening to Kendrick Lamar way before he was Kendrick Lamar. Like, I remember that Section 80 Kendrick Lamar. That's still my favorite project by him. But yeah. I I know, you know, I like the, the Eminems. I like uh, I like Nas, but I can't just listen to him all day. But I, I do like some of his songs. I like, you know, Hove, Wayne, uh, J. Cole, uh, a lot of other underground people that's known, but they're not big. It's like those other people like Dumb Kennedy. Yeah. Um, who else do I, I like listen to? Uh, ASAP Rocky. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like listening to a lot of the people that's mainstream, but they ain't mainstream. If that makes sense. No, like, that makes sense. Like they got a they like they got a big fan base, but they ain't as big as the little babies, and you know what I'm saying. For sure, for sure. that makes perfect sense, man. 
For yeah, real. I, I like the I like the underdogs, man. I like the people that's winning too, like the Drake's guy. I can listen to Drake, no skips. Like I just like I love Drake. That's probably my favorite Drake. artist. But, yeah, Drake is dope. Drake has a very good catalog, you know, and he deserves his flowers too. You know what I'm saying? Even though he is like a big artist, you know, he definitely deserves his flowers. You feel me? And the thing I respect about Drake too is that he keep his ear to the game because it's easy to be that big and just get lost. You just be like, oh, I'm just worried about what I got going on. But if you notice, like every two or three years, whoever that was that next rapper that that, that was on, a, on the cusp of being big, he gave him a feature and it took him out of there. Exactly. I mean, like like, like, like yeah. little Baby, little Baby was going to be big, but that Drake feature helped on that year. Yeah. He, and then you had Kendrick Lamar. He was going to be big, but the poetic justice. Then you had what you call it recently. Young Blue had a nice fan base, but he even said it. When Drake hopped on that thing, he said record labels was only offering him three, four hundred thousand. He said as soon as Drake hopped on that uh that R and B song he had, he said yeah. the record label offered him like eight million. Yeah, I believe it. I believe it. He be doing that. Like even with Kendrick Lamar, I don't know if you remember, but he had the song Buried Alive on um on Take Care. Nobody even knew about Lamar. Buried Alive. He let him just rock out on that whole thing. You feel me? So Drake definitely be doing that. He be he be locked in and just breaking new artists. You feel me? And that's like something that I I really like. Um, I commend because that's something that I would want to do if I was in that position. You know what I'm saying? Because, like I said, I know how it feels to be an up and coming artist and not have nobody, no help, nobody trying to. You know what I'm saying? In no way, put you in in the right places. Um, so, hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. And I know YK Osiris said recently, his friend YK Osiris, he was like, Drake don't even charge people. He was like, he got to really want to do it and really feel the the energy, you know what I'm saying? Like, he was like, everybody ever did a feature for him since he been in that position, he don't charge him. He just be like, you know, he just, you know what I'm saying, throw him the oop, you know what I'm saying? So. For real, for real. And Drake a smart businessman because he know like that's gonna keep him at the pinnacle, you know, because he's like if I'm helping all these dudes that's getting the new trending fans, and I throwing them the alley oop, it's uh, all it's gonna do is bring more love my way because they got that. It's the gift that keeps giving because he helping them and he also helping himself too. You know what I'm saying? That's the same thing with me. That's the same thing with me. It's like, and I tell the I tell the artist that's on the level, I'm like, you know this. I'm not just some good Samaritan. Like, I'm not fake. Like, I'm not just going to make it seem like I'm just here. I'm doing you this big favor. No, you're doing me a favor, too. You're giving me energy, and you giving me – um, really, that's what it is. You're giving me energy. I just told you, like, before I, I linked up with them, like, I had writer's block. But just being around these creative minds, it just opened me up to where it's like, okay, I could take a little bit of his style, a little bit of her style, you feel me, mix it with mine, and, you know, uh, continue to just make new music and new styles, man. So, uh, man, you got to check out that uh, the All-Stars, bro. The All-Stars project. The whole You got to run through the whole project, bro. Every artist, I'm telling you, I put sweat, blood, and tears into that. It's fire, bro. It's fire. The All-Stars. Say less. The All-Stars. Run through that, man. You got to give it just one run through. I promise. Yeah, I was, uh, yeah, I had listened to uh, most of your singles. I'm going uh, to listen to that, though, because I be, uh, Oh, uh, you know, I'm a mailman, so I be in the truck a lot. So I'd be like, yeah, I'm a uh that I'll listen to that while I'm delivering mail tomorrow. Bro, telling you for front to back, I promise, man, it's gonna be at least you go to me, how I gauge a project, man. Um, if I like because it's it's very tough for me to really like like a song, fuck with it. If you drop a 12 song project and I like three songs. That's a good project to me. Like if I really take three songs and they and I listen to them forever, like in my playlist, you know what I'm saying? That's a good project. If I run through your shit and it ain't no good songs, probably just one, which was the single, that's a that's not really that good to me. You know what I'm saying? But if it's three solid ones that I could live forever with, like I think about like Kendrick Lamar is a good cat kid, Mad City. Like I still listen to uh uh, promise me you will live forever. What is that? 
uh, damn. Uh, I still listen to, of course, I listen to Mass. I listen to Mad Kid. That um, blah 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 blah, man, down. Where you from? I still listen to that, and I still listen to um, promise me you will live forever. When the lights go off and it's my time to settle down. Damn, what the name of that song? Whoever listened to K Dot, they gonna know what song I'm talking about just by that. But um, what's another song? And I still listen to Don't Kill My Vibe. So that's three songs off that project that I listen to till this day. So that's why to me it's like a classic. You feel me? But um yeah, man. I don't even know what made me just get into that. <laughs> oh, I was talking about my project. If you, I'm telling you, you're gonna like at least three songs off the of All Stars. Gonna like at least three that you just that you're gonna be able to save and really rock with. I promise. Oh yeah, man. I'm definitely gonna uh hit you up, man, when I get done listening to it, man. Let me know. And if you and if not, I'm the type of person where I could take criticism, bro. Like if you tell me, like, yeah, uh, you know, if, if you got any type of criticism, I could take that. You feel me? I actually, I actually would appreciate it if you let me know like how you really felt about it. Because no, I don't believe that we all just stack goods where we can't afford to get any better. We all could definitely still get better. So let me know how you feel about it, man. For real. Yeah, absolutely, man. And uh, you know, uh, anytime you want to come on a podcast, if you uh, you know, just have to be an interview, you can talk about some real stuff. Have some other people on with us, you know. Just uh, hit me up, man, and uh, we can uh, schedule some for your artists, too. That's what I was just thinking in my head. That's exactly what I was thinking. I'm like, man, I would really like to just, uh, if anything, like just, you know, next time I'm around one of my artists, just set something up and just have a quick, you know what I'm saying, quick podcast. Yeah, absolutely, man. You know, I, uh, I do episodes every week, so uh, I'm going to drop this episode on uh, September 11th. Okay. Well, what made you want to do that day? Uh, cause I got I drop I uh I record ahead of time, so I I got episodes dropping on the twenty second, the 29th, and the fifth already. Well, it'd be September twelfth. My bad. September twelfth is on a Monday. I drop every Monday, so I already got okay. three episodes okay. scheduled for the next three weeks that I already recorded weeks ago. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, reason, yeah. The reason I do that, cause you know, like I was dropping episodes the same day, but I was, I was like, nah, like all the other people don't do that. And then I was like, just in case I get busy, I still got content coming out, so it don't make it look like I'm not doing nothing. One hundred. That's the way to do it, man. Get that, get that content built up and just rain it on their ass. You know what I'm saying? That's 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 the perfect way to do it. Real. Oh yeah, man. Absolutely, man. And uh also, man, can you uh can you send me a picture on Instagram, man, uh that I can uh use? I I um I usually get a picture to put as the podcast cover art on the YouTube and Spotify, things like that, because I'm on um 13 different streaming platforms. I'm on Amazon Music, Apple, Google, all those. Uh, okay, so I'll yeah. I'll be able to stream this this podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm on every podcast platform you can think of. I'm on, okay. I'm on, I'm on some that I ain't even know I was on. I just looked on Google the other day. I was like, dang, I ain't even know I was on this. Cause, okay. but, but you on Spotify? Yeah, yeah. Spotify just started doing video podcasts like two months ago, so you can actually watch it like you're looking at it on YouTube, like you can see the video. Yeah, that's like that's why I'm gonna check it out. I'll be on that Spotify, man. Oh, that's yeah. dope, man. I think that's really dope that podcast, like that they're doing that and able to put it on Sp Spotify to stream because sometimes I don't be feeling like listening to music. Sometimes I just want to just, you know, I just want to just hear some shit. You know what I'm saying? So I think that's really dope. And I'll be looking forward for this to drop on everything. Yeah, absolutely, man. I'll DM you my, uh, my link. They got all my links to where my podcast is at. For sure, for sure, man. What kind of picture did you want? Just any type of picture, like professional? Yeah, just any type of good picture you got that you that you will put, you know what I'm saying, as a cover or something, you know. 
it, it could have it could, it could be one of your old projects cover picture it, it don't matter for sure for sure i got you man i got you and uh this concludes uh episode of eric J the great podcast uh I, I appreciate you coming on jamar uh everybody go check out his music on all streaming platforms and go subscribe to his youtube channel Go check out his videos. Got real dope uh, content. If you appreciate uh, lyricism and not the same old no 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 no, and then you know he's the guy for you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, and you know, also too, if you appreciate a little bit of that too, like I said, I got some artists that's going that's going to bring that too. We got a, we got a wide variety. So whatever you trying to, you know, whatever you went to, you know, we got it for you. I say less. You feel me? But I'm going to let you end it. My bad, bro. I just had to say that because I want people to know, oh, yeah. like, oh, we got a wide variety of music. You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely, man. Everybody uh, be on the lookout for all his artists uh, that he mentioned earlier and they projects in the Say Less uh, record label group. They got some yeah. stuff going on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And uh, this concludes the episode, man. I appreciate you coming on, and uh, Bill, feel free to uh, reach out anytime you got something going on as far as your career or anything, you know. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me, man. For real. All right. Uh, no problem. Anytime, bro. All right, man. All right.